What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a long-term review of the MacBook Air M1 from 2020 after using it for about six months, I believe, because I did order it right away when it first came out. So I'm gonna talk about like the M1 experience as a whole, what I use it for, the productivity and power side, as well as the battery life, and just my observations of using it as my main portable and administrative computer. So over the years, I've definitely tried a lot of MacBooks, and if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know I've had like a mixed experience with Apple's line up throughout those years. I had the MacBook Pro 2010 at first and it was pretty solid. Eventually I saved up and ended up getting a MacBook Air and I also switched over to the Mac Mini and the iMac and I also eventually went back to the laptops of the MacBook Pro 15 inch with Retina display as well as a 16 inch model and also a 13 inch along the way. But I would say my favorite MacBooks of all time and the ones that I had the least issues with are the ones that I used for product Activity and just like on the go purposes, such as the MacBook 12 inch, which was kind of my go-to computer for school. With that computer, the form factor was great. It was very new, there was only one port. The power was nothing crazy, but it was really portable and I just felt like I was able to just sit down and type and get my work done. And for most of 2020, I actually didn't have a go-to portable computer because I was not really traveling at all, pretty much working from home and all I needed was a desktop computer. But when Apple announced their M1 lineup towards the end of last year, we received the units before they came out and had a chance to actually test them out and like run our kind of experiments with video editing and daily use and compatibility. And I can tell you that even though I was skeptical, I was absolutely blown away by the performance that I was able to get on the M1 Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro. After trying that for a bit, I decided to go ahead and order a MacBook Air M1 for myself. And the spec that I have here is the Mac storage option with the 16 gig upgrade. So for those who don't know, the way the M1 system works is that you can either get it in an eight or 16 gig memory. And it is actually called unified memory because the GPU and CPU actually share that memory. So in my opinion, I feel like the $200 is worth it to go ahead and upgrade because you really get that performance out of it and you can actually notice it versus in the past, you might upgrade the i5 to an i7 processor and not really notice a massive difference. Being a computer that is non-expandable in any way, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. And when it comes to storage, Apple has also recently kind of lowered their prices here and there. And so you kind of have to decide accordingly which storage option that you would like. If you're going with the base model, this computer starts at $999. And that is pretty much the price of an iPad Pro with a keyboard that is also very powerful and also adds the pen functionality. But you get a full-fledged Apple computer with their new M1 chip system that has had great reviews and a great experience with it at a price point that I feel like is really, really reasonable. And in my case, after upgrading from my previous generation MacBook Air that costed over $2,000, for about $100 less, I was able to get a significantly better performing computer that has led me to use the MacBook Air much more on a day-to-day -day basis. So each day, my kind of use case is I actually go to the office, um, as you can probably tell I'm at home right now, but um, the office is a couple blocks away and I just like sit down, do my emails, administrative work, conference calls, and actually even publish videos and do a little bit of Photoshop editing of the thumbnail and all that kind of stuff on my computer. And the biggest thing that I noticed after switching over to the M1 MacBook is that the battery life is insane. I was able to go like two, maybe even three days at one time of just like sitting down for a few hours, doing my morning work, closing it, and the next day I would just go and grab it and it would still have charge left. And that is always a great peace of mind, although I do try to plug it in every single day. Um, the other thing is that it's instant wake. So as soon as I flip it open, the computer's ready to go. And I'm usually pretty like frantic in terms of like how I want to use my tech. I just grab it and I expect it to just like work and be ready whenever I need it. And I can tell you that this MacBook definitely gave me that sense of security. When it came to like photo editing, I wasn't really intending to do a lot of that on a portable computer because at the office we also have desktops. But after doing like Lightroom and like Photoshop and even having both of them open at the same time, I'm able to actually do all the things that I need to. I'm not doing any complex like retouching or anything. And considering the MacBook Air is not exactly one that is typically known for creative and production related work, I was very impressed. And that just goes to show the amount of power that you can get from the M1 processor and also upgrading the unified memory to 16 gigs. 
Obviously on the hardware side of things, there is no redesign, but we are expecting some models of the MacBook Pro to see a revamp this year. But the MacBook Air hardware, in my opinion, is pretty much flawless. It is nice and thin, easy to take around. And the reason why I went with the Air versus the Pro is simply because I didn't really intend to use it for video editing at all. If I really wanted to, I could definitely do some 1080p cutting on this MacBook Air, but as I mentioned in my use case, I just wanted something that was ultra portable to bring on like travel if we need to in the future and back and forth from the office as like an extension to my desktop computer. The keyboard of course is one area that Apple has had quite a few problems in the past, but after the fix of the butterfly over to the scissor switch, I can tell you these problems are of the past and the keyboard is something that I enjoy typing on, feel very productive with, and as someone who also uses the iPad Pro as well, um, I'm able to just go back and forth in the Apple ecosystem and everything just feels great. Perhaps the biggest question when this MacBook first came out though is how is it going to work with your existing applications and more specifically ones that are designed to work with Intel? Because at the end of the day, it's no secret that Apple's chipsets have always been very powerful. We've seen that on the iPhones and we've seen that on the iPads. So I don't think there's any doubt of the MacBook delivering great power, but more so, if the applications that you currently have are compatible. And the macOS system has really worked well with the compatibility and even from the very start, pretty much all the applications that I was trying to run were able to work just fine very seamlessly. And now that we're in the month of April, a lot of the application, if not all of them, and the major ones at least, have all been updated to support the M1 processor and work seamlessly. But as I mentioned, I didn't really notice many issues before. On the topic of software though, I do wanna give a huge thanks to the small of this video setup. And this is actually a program that I'm using for many years now, dating back all the way to when it first came out. And I did like my MacBook or what's on my Mac video on the MacBook Pro 15 inch quite a few years ago. Setup essentially rethinks the way that we use software by giving you immediate access to a curated collection of more than 200 great productivity focused apps at once. Their portfolio includes security, remote work, productivity, and GTD, as well as starter kit for newbies and app collections for advanced users to build and enhance their day-to-day -day workflows. The subscription only costs $9.99 a month and by having access to over 200 applications, even if you just use a few such as Clean My Mac, which is made by MacPaw, you're able to get your money's worth. And Clean My Mac is another program that I've used on my computer for many years now because just to keep everything maintained, have all of your cache files and your disk permissions set, Another one that I've also been using is Luminar AI, and I've heard a lot about this photo editing software, so I decided to give it a try, and I feel like it's like a very cool approach using intelligent algorithms and all that to be able to edit a photo very effectively. If you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, you can have a seven day free trial by clicking that link down below. As for the display, this is also another area where there is a bit of a difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. This right here has a 400 nit screen. It has a P3 color gamut, whereas the MacBook Pro has a 500 nit display with some differences in the color as well. As I mentioned, it's pretty clear that if you're really planning to do a ton of photo editing um, and more video editing than the average person, then the MacBook Pro is the model that makes a lot of sense. Beyond the hardware itself, the other kind of small complaint that I have of the MacBook Air that I obviously knew going into was that I only have two ports. Um, usually you have one connected to power, the other one for an accessory, but more so when I'm jumping around between different desks, the power cord might be on one side and I would have liked if there was maybe just like a third port right here so I can plug it in on either side when it comes to charging. So if you need four ports and if you have like maybe like a mouse or a few different storage pieces plugged into the computer, you're gonna wanna go with the MacBook Pro. But I think if you can, wait for the redesign that is coming out later this year because the MacBook Air I feel like is the computer that I've been recommending to the most people right now, but the Pro still feels like it was something that Apple updated the spec on, but the real Pro models that have even more powerful processors are gonna be coming out later this year, both in the desktop and laptop side. There really hasn't been that much chatter on any update of a MacBook Air for 2021. And I'm not sure if that's gonna be a case of Apple switching to a two-year release cycle now that they don't have to change the processors every single year based on Intel's schedule, because 
If you guys see the MacBook lineup in the past, it has always been like minor spec bumps and a few things here and there. You get a hardware redesign every like five years, kind of like a car refresh cycle. But for the most part, the performance gains year after year in a mid-cycle refresh was usually around like 15 to 20% with a few different changes on the Pro model when it comes to the cooling. On the topic of fans, so the other reason why I really like the MacBook Air is that it is extremely quiet. It actually makes no sound at all because it doesn't have a fan. So even though this is the same processor as the one on the MacBook Pro, you're gonna get better performance on the MacBook Pro just because it does have a dedicated fan that is keeping everything nice and cool. And I know with like processors, the whole thing is always being based on efficiency, how much power it draws, how much heat it causes, and the computer's job is to kind of regulate the temperature to ensure you're not damaging it, but giving you the most power possible. And with Apple's own system of M1 chips, the reason why this is so effective is that Apple is designing the hardware, the software, and the chipset to maximize the amount of power and the efficiency of how it corresponds and kind of communicates with everything within the computer. So for my uses, I can tell you for performance, I have pretty much never had a problem on this 16 gig M1 MacBook Air. I have like Notion running, I have Photoshop and maybe a conference call, a ton of email tabs. Chrome is also very power consuming and I've had no problems at all. I don't really find that the computer heats up that much either and there is no fan so it makes no sound whatsoever. So. When all those things kind of come together, paired with the incredible battery life, the instant wake, the keyboard issues fixed, I feel like this is truly a computer that for what I need right now, and for a lot of people who are doing a productivity and kind of creative blend, or maybe even some programming and web design, this is like the perfect computer. So as you can probably tell by now, I'm really happy with this MacBook Air. And I feel like this year's Apple lineup has been very, very solid in terms of fixing a lot of the things that we've complained about in the past years. The iPhone 12 has essentially been flawless for what I was kind of expecting and some of the problems that I may have had on the 11. And the MacBook M1 lineup has pretty much gone very well for Apple. Its release has been very smooth. There haven't really been any common issues. And I feel like the lineup is in a really good place and that the future is bright. So what do I wanna see from the MacBook lineup. Obviously I'm very excited for the Pro line because those processors are going to be extremely powerful and just from the indications that we've had from the M1 and their initial model and the ones that we see on the Mac Mini and how that performs, I feel like it is going to be something big that is going to change the workflow for a very long time. And specifically, I really want to pick up the MacBook Pro 16 inch for example, or get something like the iMac, which I've been using for an everyday basis computer from 2017. The other big question is whether or not you should get an iPad or a MacBook right now. And that decision has been made harder than ever before because the MacBook Air is at a very competitive price at its starting point. And the iPad Pro is still an incredible tool that allows you to really use it for multimedia and productivity while also having the pen functionality, which I love to use as well. So I'm lucky enough to be able to use both of them in my workflow, but I know a lot of people and especially students are gonna be trying to decide which one is the best for them over the next few years. I would almost say the safe recommendation is to always go with a MacBook because you're just able to do more on a full computer. But with that being said, I love just using an iPad because I find I can focus better when I'm in one app instead of having like control over a ton of different things open at once on my laptop. On the power side of things, I feel like the iPad is always ahead in a way and it was really able to compete on a raw benchmark score with the baseline MacBooks. But the MacBook line has kind of inherited a lot of the good features of the iPad and its power efficiency and battery life and brought it over to the laptop. So I personally would still get a MacBook Air, but with the introduction of the iPad Air 4 at a competitive price last year, that once again makes the decision very, very hard. I think one thing that we all wanna see at some point though is a touchscreen on the MacBook. And I feel like the software of the macOS system in its most recent update last year has kind of made it more like an iPad experience as opposed to the other way around. And I feel like this kind of ecosystem is heading towards the point where there is going to be a touch intuitive interface on the MacBook. So I can't really predict the future. I don't know what to expect, but I can say that if you're looking for a great computer that is able to work very well from a productivity standpoint and you don't really need pro level performance, the Air is gonna be a computer that is going to be very trusty for many years to come. And I feel like it is a good time to pick one up right now and especially if you're a student make sure you look out for the student discounts as well otherwise i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel drop a like if you did and i'll see you all in the next one